Hi viewers. One important topic about laboratory medicine is doing a proper phlebotomy. Today we are going to talk about that topic. I am Dr. Lalita Sandal, and this is my channel Blackfish. Today the topic for discussion is phlebotomy. Phlebotomy. phlebotomy is nothing but a procedure in which a needle or a syringe is used to withdraw blood from the vein of a patient. Who all can do it? A trained phlebotomist who has exclusively done a phlebotomist course can do it. The second one, all the nursing staff are already trained to do a phlebotomy. And the third one is a medical laboratory technician who has also undergone a phlebotomy training during his tenure of education. Now, these are the things you would be seeing or you would be needing in a phlebotomy room. A pair of gloves with different types of needles, mainly a 2 ml needle, 2 ml needle with syringe and a 5 ml needle with syringe. Different types of different color coded uh, test tubes, alcohol wipes, and then we need a tourniquet. And the most important thing is you need to also have biomedical waste dustbins in your phlebotomy room. I am going to explain you what is needed in a phlebotomy room with a demo video now. And after that, we are going to follow it with a demonstration of proper phlebotomy. Keep watching my video till the end to know more. If you see, this is the phlebotomy room. Once you enter, you see a phlebotomy chair. This phlebotomy chair, exclusive phlebotomy chairs are also available. Or else a phlebotomy chair like this with an armrest is enough. This is a phlebotomy room rack in which all the test tubes are, uh, test tubes, uh, the gloves and all are arranged properly. Apart from this, these are some posters we have stuck in our phlebotomy room, which contains what tests in which test tube has to be taken and some history for a pathologist to report and uh, also for which all tests a consent form is necessary like HIV, HPS, AG, VD, RL and HCV. These are serology tests. And for these consent form has to be taken and the consent form must also be present in the phlebotomy room. Apart from that, this is the phlebotomy tray. In the phlebotomy tray, if you see there are so many test tube, color coded test tubes, glove, a pen, uh, syringes, vein glow finder that is a vein finder, band-aid, alcohol wipes. And this is the most important thing which is mandatory in your phlebotomy room that is the biomedical waste dustbins. Now if you see, now we are going to demonstrate how a proper phlebotomy is done. Before withdrawing the blood, just cross check whether the name, age and the ID of the patient is correctly written in the bill and the uh, test tube and the urine container. So this patient has ordered one CBC and a urine routine. So we will see how this is done. First the tourniquet is tied properly and tightly so that the vein is prominently seen in the patient. In some obese patients and also old age, you will not be able to find the vein properly and two to three times you will be pricking the patient. Kindly use such a device. This is called as vein finder. You get it in Amazon. Use this vein finder so that clearly you can see the vein and mark it. And after that, you have to use an alcohol wipe or a cotton with alcohol. You have to wipe the area first so that you sterilize the area. After that, you take a syringe. If it is only for a CBC sample, a 2 ml syringe is enough. If the tests are more, better you take a 5 ml syringe and withdraw blood so that you needn't prick 2 to 3 times. Now the blood is withdrawn properly with just a simple prick. Once the blood is withdrawn, slowly take out the needle. By the way, on the sideways, you also have to put a dry cotton. Do not use an alcohol spirit cotton after doing phlebotomy. You have to put a dry cotton in the place of phlebotomy and this needle has to be closed and properly disposed before you are going to pour it into the test tube. So see, now we have disposed the needle. Now with the blood, the syringe is there. And this is a test tube. By the sideways of the tube, you have to put the sample inside the test tube slowly. 
do not force it down or else there will be you know breakdown of RBC slowly through the sides of the test tube pour the blood into the test tube and close it properly with the cap and throw the syringe into the biomedical waste. See in this EDTA tube up to the mark which is already marked on the test tube we have to take blood. After that you are not supposed to vigorously shake. You are supposed to gently move it in this direction, rotate it in this direction around 8 to 10 times for the additive to be properly mixed with the blood. Again you cross check all the details of the patient and the bill and you have to also cross check the name with the patient. Once this is done, take a band aid and put it in the place of phlebotomy. Remove the cotton roll or cotton sponge whichever you have kept, the dry one. Put it in the dustbin and put a bandaid in the place of phlebotomy and send them off. Now we have seen how a phlebotomy room should look like and now we are going to see what are the points to remember, the most important points to remember while doing a phlebotomy. I have listed three points. The first one, the patient's detail must be properly entered in the test tube. Second thing, use a vein finder if you have difficulty in finding a vein for little obese patients or for kids. And then, please don't use alcohol or spirit cotton to wipe off the blood after you have done the phlebotomy or after you have withdrawn a blood because alcohol is used mainly for, I mean, like it helps in dilatation of the vein. When there is dilatation of the vein, blood keeps leaking out. Use only dry cotton swipes, uh, dry cotton wipes to wipe off the blood after phlebotomy, after you have finished withdrawing of the blood. Thank you for watching my video. If you have any doubts, you can definitely write on the comment section below. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, kindly subscribe it to know more about laboratory medicine practice. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow with another video.